Hey, what's up, my friend? The Chris here from Exano Online. Exciting video for you today because I'm gonna go over the new AutoTune Pro X update that just came out. So we're up to version 10.3.1, which now includes full ARA2 compatibility in Cubase, which is awesome news, especially if you already work with AutoTune Pro X. So huge thanks to Antares, who is sponsoring this video. So I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to be able to work with AutoTune Pro X within your DAW by using it as an ARA2 extension. So let's dive right in. Now, if you go into your DAW, in my case, a Cubase Pro 12, instead of inserting AutoTune as an inserted plugin, I'm gonna use it as an ARA2 extension. To do so, there's a couple of ways I can do that in Cubase. First, I can select an audio event, uh, go up to audio, go down to extensions. I'm gonna have the list of the extensions that I have available on my system. So in my case, AutoTune Pro and Spectra Layers 10. So I'm gonna choose AutoTune Pro and you will see on this selected uh, event, I have this small icon, uh, which is the uh, ARA2 extension icon. So that means that I have an extension on this audio event. And from this point, I can start doing my pitch correction right down below, because if I double click on that event, I have AutoTune loaded straight into my editing window in the lower zone. I can also make that window as a separate window and use AutoTune this way, but I'm gonna keep it in the lower zone for now. Now to deactivate uh, the extension, I'm gonna right click on that event or select the event and go on top under audio, click on extensions and uh, click on remove extension from selected event. Now the second way I can apply an ARA2 extension in Cubase is by selecting the channel and applying that extension on the full channel, okay? So that might differ from DA to DA, but this is the way we can do it using Cubase Pro 12. So I'm gonna select the track, go up straight from my left zone, I go up to the first tab, and I'm gonna click on no extension, and from there, I'll be able to select AutoTune Pro, and right away, it's gonna be applied on all audio events on this channel, which is very, very nice. So I'm gonna double click on the event I wanna work on. And once again, I'm gonna have AutoTune loaded in the lower zone. Now the cool thing and the huge advantage on using AutoTune as an ARA2 extension is that you don't need to record the performance within the plugin like we used to. Okay, but instead everything is done automatically and instantly, which is a huge time saver. So as you can tell right away by double clicking on my event, I instantly have all of my notes of that vocal recording straight in AutoTune, uh, which is great. So it's already pre corrected, you know, according to uh, all the parameters that I have here in AutoTune Pro, of course, in graph mode. From this point, I can tweak a few things. Uh, like for example, uh, I'm working on a back vocal track. So I'm just gonna have you briefly listen to how it sounds like. Keep on for the answer, cause I uh, now, a bit of uh, correction has been applied automatically, like I just said, uh, but I'm just gonna tweak a few parameters on top to start with. Uh, first of all, the input type. Okay, now I'm gonna click on learn and have auto-tune to choose the input type. So it says that it's a soprano. I'm gonna click on retrack. So it has been applied to the correction. Uh, and there's also the key. Now, by default, it's gonna load AutoTune in the key of C with the chromatic scale, which is gonna work for most things, okay? But if you want to find the correct key of your song, you can use Auto Key 2 again by Antares. And I have it loaded straight on my mix bus. And I'm just gonna bypass my vocals and have, just have a quick listen and have Auto Key 2 evaluate in which key I am right now.
perfect. It says it's in E minor. That is correct. From this point, what I can do is to send to Autotune and that will send the key and the scale information straight into Autotune or all the Autotune instances you have in your session, which is pretty cool. Now, what I'm going to do though, is instead of keeping that to minor, I'm going to bring that to chromatic. It's just going to be a bit more flexible as far as note selection goes. And on the left, I have all the notes listed. Um, it used to be only the root note, but now all the notes are listed, which is pretty handy if you want my opinion. So if you go up here into the settings icon, click on preferences, and you go down. Um, if you want to bring that back to only the root note, you can just uh, go down to show note labels on and select root note keys only. Okay, I'm gonna keep it to all keys because I kind of like this setting. And then we have the transpose, which is pretty self-explanatory. If you need to transpose uh, a few notes or several notes up and down, you can do so. And that could be a good tool to maybe create a new harmony or something, you know? Uh, and there's also the detune, which by default is set up to 440 Hertz, which is normal. 440 Hertz is basically the A note. Okay, it's the frequency of the A note. And now it can happen that you're working on a production like let's say like a rock song uh, that is detuned to 438 uh, just to give a bit more of heaviness to the sound that can happen in that case you can bring that down to 438 but most of the songs I work with are in 440 so that is the default uh, status here the mix knob can be handy you know um, especially if you want to compare before and after processing you know I can bring that to zero and listen to my original on processed and on tuned vocal and then uh, bring it back to 100% so I can compare and go back and forth like this, you know? Uh, or, you know, nothing stops you to create a special effect, you know, and blend the unprocessed, uncorrected signal with the corrected signal. That can create a kind of cool phasing effect, I guess, you know? Uh, so this is the mix knob. Uh, then we have like a bunch of tools uh, down below that we are gonna look at as I go and correct a few notes here. Now, like I said earlier, Autotune has created some notes automatically and did some pitch correcting right off the bat. Uh, if I want to bring that to my original state without any correction and do everything manually, in the Create Curves section, I click on Normal and there you go. This is the original on corrected vocal. By doing so, I can select the tools that I have right here, the line, the curve, uh, the note, uh, for that matter, and start, you know, start correcting stuff. And there's also the auto curve that you can uh, work with or just simply uh, do like it, uh, uh, it was by default and get the notes created. But that doesn't mean that it's gonna be like 100%. I'm still gonna go and listen to the whole take and make some adjustments if needed. Uh, but this is a very good starting point. Then I have all those uh, uh, tools that I have access to um, that I need to know pretty well because these are pretty handy when I work uh, pitch correcting through uh, Autotune. Um, so to go from one tool to another, I can simply use my, uh, my computer keyboard's shortcuts from uh, the number key one on top to zero, okay? And that will bring me from the timing tool straight to the draw tools, okay? That I have right here, which gives me a very fast workflow. Now, these key commands are shared with your DAWs key commands. So it's important to click on the tools first and then uh, it will switch to uh, to the autotune key commands at this point. You know, this is what it does for me anyways, you know. Uh, so uh, the zoom is uh, one of the tools that, you know, is very handy, of course. So by simply clicking, it's gonna zoom in and by keeping my finger on option or out on windows, it's gonna zoom out. Okay, I can also keep my fingers on shift and command and use my scroll mouse uh, to zoom in and out horizontally. And uh, by keeping my finger on option or alt on windows uh, and use my scroll mouse, this is gonna uh, zoom in a vertical way, okay, in and out. The scroll uh, tool is just to move uh, things around, pretty simple. The split is the scissor icon, uh, self-explanatory. You wanna split uh, one event into several events. Uh, you can do so straight from Autotune. Now the undo command is right here on top. There's that small circle 
circle arrow, which gives you the undo and redo commands. Range is quite nice also. So let's say I want to select these notes and bring them to their original state. I just select the range tool, uh, select my notes, and then click, for example, click on uh, normal, and that will bring those specific notes to their unprocessed, uncorrected state. But I can also do so to uh, bring them up and down, uh, increase or decrease, transpose up or down, you know, um, do the uh, retune speed up and down also, the vibrato, you know, all those types of uh, settings can be applied on that selection. Something else you can do is to create loop points within Autotune, which is going to be synced with your DAW, which is quite cool. So let's say I want to loop this section. I just click right here on the Autotune timeline and that will create a loop. And as you can see right on top in Cubase, I have that loop created with my left and right locators within my DAW, which is quite cool. And to remove the loop, I just remove it uh, from Cubase and it will instantly remove it from Autotune. So as an example of stuff I can do, let's have a quick listen. I'm gonna fix that note, the er of answer. I'm gonna click on my multifunction tool. This tool is uh, uh, great to do all sorts of stuff. Uh, for example, I can bring up and down a note and by clicking on the note, as you can hear, I can listen to the pitch which is very cool. Honestly, this is a very nice feature. I can also increase or decrease the size of the note. So it affects a bit more of the performance or not, you know, and I can just select a note and then readjust the retune speed, the vibrato, so on and so forth. And if I keep my finger on shift, I'll be able to fine tune. This is pretty cool. I can also use the nudge, you know, to do so. But I find it pretty handy just to use the, the shift key and just drag that up and down, you know. But for very tiny, sm small moves, the nudge uh, buttons here on top will do the trick pretty well. All right, let's try this out. So I think that's pretty good. All right, so let's bring this one up. Okay, I can hear that transition here, which is not very smooth. So let me bring, uh, reduce the size of those notes and see if it's gonna help the transition. It's not too bad. All right, within the context of the mix. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to the U. What I'm gonna do here is to use the line draw tool and let me just draw one note here by selecting the tool, dragging left and right, double clicking, and there you go. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my uh, selection tool, bring that, uh, that note up or down. I'm gonna leave it this way for now. All right, I have some problems here. Let's check. Uh, so something I'm gonna do here, let me take my range tool and bring those notes to their original state and listen to how that sounded like at first. Okay, let me do a few things here. I'm gonna work these out manually. Interesting, I think that can work. Okay, um, let me try something here with the note. I'm just gonna draw one note right here. Okay, that's not too bad. Let me bring it up just a bit. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm just gonna draw another note here. All 
right. Here to see you okay, I'm going to fix that up. Here to see you All right, so let me bring this one up a bit higher. So, you know, it's the type of thing that I do when I pitch correct manually a vocal recording. Here to see you. And sometimes the goal is to make it as natural sounding as possible. Here to see you. Like in this case, Here to see you. I can, I start to hear kind of a share effect Here to see you. that you, uh, that you can hear if I select all of those uh, notes and bring my retune speed to the max. Here to see you. Okay. That could be cool for some pop effect on a production, you know, there's nothing wrong with this type of effect, but in this case, this is not what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna bring the re, I'm just gonna bring it back to how it was. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is to just tweak the size of those notes. Here to see you okay, it's a bit more smooth here. Let me bring back the retune speed of this note. Here to see you okay, I think that that can work. That can actually work. Let me bring this one down a bit. Here to see you so now if we just listen to this last part without the correction, Here to see you I should go. and with the correction, Okay, so that works pretty well. Once I'm done and I'm happy with what I did, uh, what needs to be done here is to click on my track, uh, go back in my left zone, click on the extension Autotune Pro, and then make track extension permanent. Okay, are you sure you cannot undo this? I'm gonna click sure, okay? And that will create another file within Cubase or your DAW and will replace it right away with the correction made. That will commit the pitch correction on your file and remove the ARA2 extension at the same time. I'm gonna be quite honest with you, uh, the Autotune plugin version in auto mode is great, but the minute you jump in graph mode, it has to be an ARA2 extension. If not for me, it's a no-go, <laughs> okay? This is how I'm used to work. And I think that Antares did a very good job with Autotune Pro X as an ARA2 extension in Cubase and other DAWs. So if you wanna check it out, I'm gonna leave the link down below. Let me know what you think. Leave your questions and comments also. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Until next time, take care and see you.